Hey guys, Federalist here. It's uh, it's Monday night here in Illinois. It's the eve of our uh, our uh, primary elections uh, tomorrow. I'm urging all my people from Illinois, if you're out there and you're listening, if you catch this, um, I don't know if you've made up your mind about uh, what you're going to do tomorrow. Uh, two guys I really got to speak about though. <laughs> These guys are both uh, kind of. Uh, you know, mid-state, down-state guys, but they're both excellent human beings. Uh, first one I want to talk about is Adam Angieski. Um, just met his dad two weeks ago at our local gun show. Uh, the guy is a true conservative, a Tea Party type. Um, <laughs> he's a self-described conservative Reagan Republican. Um, the guy is just, uh, he's true blue. He was born and raised uh, 16 miles from here, from where I live, uh, in a little town called Hersher. Go Tigers, right? <laughs> um, the guy is, across the board, probably the best candidate we've got. Um, and he's creeping right up in the polls. Um, the, uh, the debate the other night, you could tell the absolute disdain that the establishment Republicans had for this guy, which is just a reason to vote for him for real. I mean, isn't it? I mean, haven't we had enough of these go along to, you know, get along people, uh, Republicans in name only? Um, you know, a few of these guys are still kind of thinking about tax hikes for people who are already taxed the crap out of, you know, even more hostile business environment to drive our businesses out. Uh, Adam Angieski is the only one that's really coming across with any kind of breath of fresh air feel. Um, he's also a strong NRA guy, so you guys that are Second Amendment advocates and uh, people just as pissed off as I am about the fact that we're one of only two states that has no right for concealed carry at all for any of its citizens, which is absolutely pathetic. Um, you know, this guy is, he's the good stuff. I mean, he's an outsider. The other night at the uh, <laughs> at the uh, debates, all the other, well, for one thing, the one I was checking out, uh, Andy McKenna never even showed up because he's got some issues about, uh, he probably didn't want to get pummeled about his recent uh, malfeasance. Apparently he's got some uh, ethics charges against him, and he's he's run kind of a nasty campaign, and all of a sudden this stuff is kind of coming to the front, and he's, you know, he's making kind of a, a desperate bid to just kind of stay out of the limelight and do some private little meet and greet type of stuff and stay out of the cameras uh, largely wrong answer I mean really I mean we've already had Blagojevich we've already had Ryan which would you know George Ryan if you know where I'm at I actually worked for George Ryan a couple of days uh, doing my job and pleasant enough guy but apparently you know maybe not as much on the up and up as he should have been so that kind of sucks you know but we want somebody now that's that's a definite conservative uh, that's not a guessing game and you're taking an outsider you're taking a chance but I'd rather take the chance on some fresh blood with some good ideas than establishment Republicans that if they had any hope of changing the direction of our state they'd have done it by now I think that uh, it's been said that they have had a hundred years of service to the state of Illinois under the Republican banner and have done nothing and here we are 11 you know by some estimates of about 11 billion dollar gap in our budget I mean if that's the best we can do, that's pretty harsh, you know. And I'm willing to do this uh, forensic, a uh, forensic study of our our economic system here, and in our you know open the books up, do a uh, do an audit. I think that's fantastic. And uh, he's actually talking about some uh, regression as far as instead of having you know an increased budget, he's thinking about 10% reduction in budget. Um, a lot of people are tightening their belts right now. I'm sure you've noticed it in your office and at your work. Um, the big order of the day right now is productivity. It's get rid of a couple people, reallocate those responsibilities to other people within the staff that remains, and see if we can get enough done to, you know, to s just hold off expenses and raise the bottom line a little bit, uh, get back in the fight with a little bit leaner and meaner uh, work aspect. Um, <laughs> so definitely my vote for governor uh, is going to Adam Angievsky. Um The other guy I'd like to talk about is a guy who I also work for uh, at one point, and uh, it's kind of funny, my brother and his brother-in-law opened up a business together. Uh, they're no longer in business together, one bought the other one out, but um, this guy's name is Adam Kinzinger. Uh, Adam is a an Air Force 
pilot, uh, did tours of Iraq and Afghanistan, served on, I believe, the, the board down south for like a township board or something, uh, beat a longtime incumbent from uh, the Democrats, and was reelected uh, by a landslide in his next term. Uh, went off to serve for our country. Um, great guy, great human being. Um, I think that if you have, uh, again, good conservative values at heart, this is a guy for you. It's a guy that deserves your consideration. And he's going up against Debbie Halverson in uh, Illinois 11. Um, this guy is excellent, a uh, person of excellent character. Um, nothing more I can say about him. The guy is fantastic. Um, once again, uh, common sense conservative and for you guys in the Tea Party this is a guy that you could call your own um, I just wanted to get my two cents in out there I know it's it's Monday night and a lot of you guys are thinking about heading to the polls in the morning and uh, grabbing yourself a ballot so hey do it up and let's take a chance you know we got nothing left to lose we've seen where the Democrats have gotten us um, we've seen where their progressive uh, tendencies take us and it's to toward ruin I mean, here we are on the teetering on the edge of the cliff, and we have the establishment Republicans as well. Um, those moderate, wishy-washy, go-along to get along types that have uh, that have been right there at the helm with the Democrats. Um, we have the entrenched Democrats in the city of Chicago and and the cronies in the Illinois State House and like Mike Madigan. And we need to really fight back against these types. They're idiots. They've led us to the brink of disaster. They can't get enough big government in there so they can get cronyism on, you know, pay off their friends with big no-bid no uh, uh, job lets and, and everything else. Forget that. We, we need to take this thing in a different direction. And I'm willing, and at this time in, in Illinois' existence, it's time we give somebody a fair shake that's from the outside. Get the outsiders in here. You know, I don't want anything that's even closely, you know, I don't, I don't want any politician to get in right now that has any kind of an establishment background because they're part of the problem. They are the reason we are here today in Illinois, and they're the, they're, they've all led us over the cliff. We need somebody that's a clear outsider that's going to take us back, that owes nothing to nobody, uh, self-made man, uh, good local guys. Hey, let's give them a shot. What do you think? Tell me what you think, guys.